The next thing that we want to work on is being able to handle multiple elements in our JSON. So here we have slider 1 and slider 2 with values being passed along. Let's go ahead and start by just printing out the key value pairings for every element within the JSON. So the way that we can do that in Python is by using a for loop and there's actually a helper function called items. So you can call data.items and that will give back the key value pairings. So we can loop through them. We can say for key val in items and then we can print key val. There may or may not be a comma there. We'll revisit. Now if we send our data we can see that we actually printed off our key and then our value and then our key and then our value. And then this last line right here is happening because of this print statement down here. This is great because that means that within this loop we can have access directly to our key and directly to our value. And so in here we're going to write the key and values into a table. So the next thing we need to do is look up how to write rows programmatically into a table in Touch Designer. So let's go ahead and look up that within the Python help. So if we're on the table dat, you can click this Python help here. And there's three operations that we're going to need to do. We need the ability to find a cell. So here's the example for that. We can search for a cell that has a label. So in our case, it would be like slider one. That's super helpful. We need the ability to be able to just insert a brand new row. And if we kind of keep going down, let's look for uh, append. Row modifying table contents. You'll see that there's a function here called append row. This is great. So we'll be able to just tack in any time that there's a new value that we haven't, a new key that we haven't seen before. So let's say like we added in a new slider and we haven't added that into our table yet. We can just append that row. And then the other thing is, there we go, replacing a row. Okay, this is great. So now we can get a reference if the cell already exists. So let's say we already have slider one, the key slider one, instead of January here, we'd check like, oh, is, is slider one there? And if it is, we can then replace it with the new value. Okay, so we're gonna test out using these functions standalone before we add those into our WebSocket component. The other thing that I wanted to show as well is let's kind of simulate the data in our table beforehand just so you can see why we're even setting it up this way. So I'm going to put the table in an active mode and I'm going to add another column and here I'm going to say like slider 1 and then I'm going to add in the value of like 0.2 and then I'm going to add another row and let's say this is like slider 2 and this is 0.5 Basically, we want to be able to update and modify this table with any values like this, where the first column is going to be the name, and then the second column is going to be the value. And what's great is that we can convert this into a chop. So if we right click on the end here, go to chops, and you go to dat2, immediately you'll notice that we have both of those values in a chop format. So then you could put down a select and then get access to slider one. Oh, it's adding some weird spacing. Oh, you know what? When you add it into the table, it's not going to have the quotation marks. It's just going to assume that it's a string. 
There we go. It's going to look like this. There we go. So you'll get access to slider one, and now you can kind of pass this around Touch Designer however you'd like. I feel like it's a lot easier to work with things once they're in a chop. OK, so we need to programmatically search to see. Let's start by searching to see if a specific cell exists. So I'm going to put down a text at. And I'm going to go into the comment section, switch the language to Python. So that way we have syntax highlighting. And then let's do this. We need to get a reference to our table. So we're going to get op table one, and we're going to do find cell. And let's look for slider one. And then let's store that into a variable called exists. And let's print that. I'm going to go ahead and go out of the active mode and hit Command R to run that. And it prints slider 1. And what about if we do nothing? None. OK, that's great. So things in Python can be truthy. So if we wanted to check um, you know, if exists, then print it. It exists. Right now, it's not going to print anything when I run it. But then if I change it to slider 1, it'll print. So that's great. So we can use this as our check. And what we'll want to do here is like if the row, if, if this specific data already exists, then we don't want to insert a brand new row. We want to just update it. And let's go ahead and do that. So. Let's make a let's make a reference specifically to our table so that way we can reuse it. We're just going to call it t. We're going to say t is equal to this table. And that way we can just reference a little shorthand for it. So that's our t.find cell. And if it exists, what do we want to do? We want to replace the row. So t.replace row and we have to give it the name so the name here is slider one and then we have to update what we want it to actually store and in this case it's going to be an array and it needs to contain the name first followed by the value so let's do like 0.2 or what's what is it currently it's already 0.2 let's change it to 0.4 and then let's run this there we go. OK, so we were able to modify that specific row. That's great. So what if it doesn't exist? Then we want to append the row. And in this case, we can just pass in a list of all of the things that we want to tack in. So it's going to first be the name followed by the value, so point five, whatever we want it to be. Um, let's do, let's call this slider four. Nope, doesn't like that. Maybe it needs to be an array. OK, I like that. Look at that. That inserted the row. OK, so this is great. Uh, but it's a little too specific. So why don't we abstract it into a function that we can reuse, where we can provide it a key and a value and a table. And it'll do all this for us. So now that we have all this functionality, um, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to define the way we can create a function in Python is using def. And we're going to give it a name. So insert value and we're just going to create some variables or some parameters for ourselves so the first one's going to be our table and then it's going to be our key and our value and basically 
we're going to do everything that we just did here. So first you need to see, OK, does this value, does this key even exist? So we can say if, and we're just going to copy this little section right here, if we find the cell, not for slider 4, but for our specific key, if that exists, then we're going to replace our row. But we don't want to just replace it with slider 1. It's actually going to be our key. And then same thing here. We're going to replace it with our key. And then instead of 0.4, that's going to be our value. OK, that's looking good. Next up, else if it doesn't exist already, we're going to append our row. And instead of just using slider 4, we're going to use our key. And then we're going to use our value. So we can actually delete all of this now. And as long as we have a reference to our table below this function, we can call it and test it out. So let's call insert val. And we're going to provide it our table. We're going to provide it a name. So this is going to be our test. And then our value is going to be 0.2. And let's go ahead and run this. There it is. OK, awesome. So we were able to insert a brand new row into our table. And then now, if we just want to update that specific one, there it is. We can update it. OK, so this next trick that I'm going to show you is super helpful for working with multiple files and organizing some of your Python code in Touch Designer. So now that we've defined this function, wouldn't it be great if we could use it in another dat? Well, Touch Designer actually gives you a really nifty way of doing that. I'm going to put down a new text dat, and I'm going to switch it over to Python. The way that we can get a reference to this function is by referencing the name here. So let's give it a new name. We're going to call this like our table modifier. And instead of doing something like operator, we can actually use mod. And it'll grab the module. So we'll get table modifier. And then we can just reference the name of the function, insert val. So here, we still need to get a reference to, to be able to use this function, we still need to be able to pass in the correct parameters. So let's snag a reference to our table. And then we can pass in our table as our first parameter. Our second one, we can pass in the name. So we'll do like uh, A, and then our value is going to be like 0.2. And if we run this, Oh, I oh, added an extra parenthesis. There we go. There it is. All right. So this is super helpful. Why don't we actually put a reference to our table inside our function? I think that'll make it a lot easier to reuse. One thing that we don't really want to do is it's, it's not very efficient to have a reference to our table every single time that we insert a new value because we'll be inserting new values like many many times per second so generally a good practice is to create a reference to any operator in touch designer outside of your function and then get a reference to it inside but here what we would do is remove t and then we don't actually have access to this variable within the function here. So we need to de redefine it. We need to say global t. And that should give us access to this table variable here. So now whenever we use this, we don't need to specify what table we're trying to add it to. And let's go ahead and try that out. Remove our reference. And let's set a to 0.1 and run it. Cool, that works great. OK, and that makes it a lot easier for us. We don't have to try and import our table or anything like that. Um, so this is basically the line that we're going to use. Let's go ahead and cut that line. And I'm going to delete this table. And 
we're going to bring this into our WebSocket, our WebSocket callback. So what are we going to do? While we're looping through our key value with our items, well, we've actually handled all of our different cases. So I'm going to paste this line in. We get a reference to our table modifier, and we're going to insert our value with our key and our value. And then we don't need to be doing this specific check and setting of the constant anymore. And I'm also going to delete the message printing. And if we take this out of an active mode, we can go ahead and test this out. I'm going to clear the console and let's try setting that. So I'm going to send some new values. Slider one is going to be one. Slider two is going to be 2.2. And then we'll throw a new one in there just to make sure that it's able to insert a new value. So we'll do uh, AA and 2.2 as well. And let's send it. Oh, and let's double check that it picked it up over here. So we'll send it. Okay. I just like doing this because I, I know that it was received and that we're sending our data correctly. Okay, and then we'll go over to Touch Designer and let's double check in our table. Oh, um, I'm going to turn the WebSocket on and off because I took a lot of time to record this video. <laughs> so we're going to try sending it again. And it looks like that was received. There it is. Okay, sick. This is great. Oh, that was a lot. Thank you for following along up until this point. Basically, all we need to do now is just replicate some of this functionality into the website. And it's actually going to be a lot easier to set up on the website. Um, we don't need to do as general of a use case here where we're you know converting it into a table and all of that. We can just get our reference to our sliders and go from there. All right, I'll see you in the next one.